Welcome one and all from across the country. Today is December 15th, 2016, and this is Mastermind Call number 104. Been doing this for two years now. We really appreciate y'all being here today. This is great. We've got three people in the queue already. Um, let's just go around real quick, uh, and then we'll get to our people who, who are in the queue. Tim, anything you want to um, share with the group this week? Yeah, I'll just quickly update uh, everybody on one thing that some of you may, you know, we've gotten some questions and may be concerned about. Mark Boucher, who is our uh, guy that a lot of you talk to in regard to your websites and maybe getting started with the mailings and things like that. Uh, Mark is ill. Uh, he's been out since last Thursday. Mark is an elite athlete and uh, was heading over to a run in uh, on the other coast of Florida and got sick uh, in the evening, wasn't able to even make the run, and uh, had to get him to the hospital. He's got some sort of an intestinal problem going on, and they, we did get him back home. He got a little better, was able to try and get back to work a little bit, but uh, he's now back in the hospital again, and uh, he's being seen and getting taken care of, and hopefully we'll have some better news about him quickly. And anything that you were working on with Mark, uh, I've kind of tried to jump in and uh, – backstop what he was doing so i've got everybody that i'm aware of up to date so far tom's been real good at making sure we stay on top of any requests real quickly but if you're working on anything with mark and you need some feedback and you're not getting anything he's not ignoring you he's just unable to contact you just send something to support at all the leads.com and we'll get right back to you and uh, you'll probably get the absolute delight of talking with me and we'll, we'll get you all squared away <laughs> And, Tim, just for those that may not know, Mark is not only our account manager, but he, he handles websites, collateral material, and the mailings. So especially if it's a website or a, a mailing issue, um, just know that, that you know, you'll, be t you'll probably get the pleasure of talking to Tim for the next week or so instead of Mark. And, and as always, like Tim said, su support at alltheleads.com is the best help way to get help really quickly with anything you need and just be really – specific about what you need and the best person will always get back to you. Um, Chad, anything from a training perspective that you'd like to share? Kudos to whoever was on the call listening to Fast Track today. Um, no, I don't have much. You want to summarize? I, uh, we, had a, we had a really, I thought we had a great um, yes. call yesterday. So we had a role play call yesterday, number 14, I believe, and that has been posted to our Facebook group as well as the website, and if you guys, um, the, the website's new to all of us still, but when you log into Subscriber Portal, on the left, you'll see a link for conference calls, and when you click in there, go hit uh, Conference Call Archive, and that will take you to a monthly, kind of like a podcast layout, where you can search by month, and we have one role play call and four of these mastermind calls archived for the last couple of years, so take a look at those when you get a chance. Um the other thing that I did add, because enough of you requested it finally, <laughs> I did sit down and write out a script. Um, for anyone who knows me, that's really against my grain, but because there's so many variables in, in this situation and so many directions the conversation can go, um, there is a script. I added it to our Facebook group yesterday if you want to take a look at it. And it is heavily disclaimered, and it kind of helps you understand you know, why it's in that order. So. Something that may be helpful for a lot of you. Um, so take a look at that when you have a chance. Excellent. And the, the, the recurring theme yesterday, Chad, um, we won't go into the whole call again, but the recurring theme was a lot of people, and it kind of makes sense over the holidays, that are getting that um, objection, you know, call me back in a week, call me back next month, call me back in, you know, a couple months. You know, how to handle that and how to do your best to get in front of the people as soon as possible. So if anybody is having that issue, go listen to that call. And um, Chad did a great job of answering that objection and kind of giving, giving agents great ideas on, you know, how to close for the appointment so you can get in front of them, whether you get the listing or not. Your odds are always much better of eventually getting it if you can get face-to-face -face or, you know, at least on the phone and give a chance to, you know, to give them a, a presentation. All right, well, enough from us, guys. We've got three people in the queue. We've got room for four or five more. Again, hit star six and hit one. We will get to everyone, and let's go ahead and uh, open it up to the first person. Phone number ending in 0206, you're up. 
Hi, this is Benedict. So this is my first time of joining you. Jim, we spoke yesterday. Yeah, welcome. Um, yes, thank you so much. I'm pleased to really be here. Any, so any pretty much, questions? Yeah, pretty much um, here, checking it out, you know, like we spoke, and um, I kind of like what I heard. So um, I don't quite have any question right now, but uh, I'm just on the listening mode anyway. So. Okay. All right. Well, welcome, Benedict. Yeah. Nice, nice Thanks talking so much, to you. Thanks so much, Jude. Thanks, everybody. Right. Sure. Next up is the phone number ending in 3908. You're up. Hi. Uh, this is Sam with Exit First Realty down in Richmond, Virginia. How are you guys doing? Hey, great, Sam. Welcome. Good. Thanks. Um, my question is, what do you what do you guys do when the PR is out of state? Um, I'm working on my first batch of leads, and I got probably five or six that are um, like one of them is in California, and we're in Virginia. Some of them are just just pretty far out of state and won't be in the area anytime soon. How do you how do you guys deal with that? Yeah, and in Chad, I'll, uh, Chad, I'll let you go over the the conversation, but I I would just wanted to share with you, Sam. I. I love those. I, I tested this program when I had the idea about four years ago in my market. I'm in I'm in Florida. This is where everybody kind of comes to die. And <laughs> I ended up I ended up doing 16 deals, and I went on one appointment. And what I loved about it, it was a very efficient way to take a listing. You didn't even have to. It was a phone conversation. You know, you know, followed up by sending the paper off paperwork off and waiting for it to come back. And Chad, I know you have a specific. Um, series of steps you suggest in that situation. So would you take it from here? Yeah, so I refuse to do an appointment where all of the decision makers can't be present by phone on a webinar or in person. So depending on the kind of the tech savviness level of, of the individual and, and the other decision makers, I have kind of, I guess, three, a three step of three prong approach. Um, ideally, I would want to get them on something like Join.me or GoToWebinar where we can all interact together in audio and video. But that's not always possible. Um, the next kind of the next step down would be when I get the listing package ready, the, the one that I'm taking to the appointment, I will email each of the, the decision makers and then include a conference line. So we'll actually, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll have the file in front of them or printed. And we will all dial into the conference line at the same time and do the appointment. But if there just is no tech savvy at all, then I'll do the same thing, but I'll snail mail off the package. So everybody has the exact same copy with the same markups and highlighting. And we will do a conference call, um, you know, at, at the house. And I think just about anyone knows how to use a phone. So you can usually get everybody on a conference call. Um, but I like to have them. I like to all be looking at the same thing, especially if the home is not in good condition or if somebody has unrealistic price expectations. Um, that's where most listings will hang up. If you know, if one decision maker thinks it's worth 200 and the other knows it's worth 150, you've got to close that gap. And having everybody present and looking at the same package is the only way I've figured out how to do that. Okay, great. Thanks. Any other follow-up questions, Sam? Does that help? No, yeah, that helps a lot. All right, excellent. And and just to clarify, it's not always going to be the case that there is more than one person. A significant number of mine had one executor. Um, you know, they were – you have to ask good questions of the executor. If it's him and one sibling and he insists that he or he insists, no, you know, my brother or sister are on the same page, I was probably a little softer than Chad. I would go ahead and do the presentation with one person, but I would just really make sure – that there wasn't anybody else that should be included. And sometimes it will only be one person. But that's, and Chad, that's one of the questions on your checklist, your seller's checklist, to ask that question in your initial conversation. You know, I know you're the executor. Are there other people that should be included in the conversation? That's one of your first questions that you ask You're among the first series of questions, right? Yeah, and as soon as they tell me who those people are, I want to know how they're getting along. Um, yeah. And that kind of that's the first step in deciding which direction I'm going, you know, going to go with with the appointment and the listing strategy. Yeah, in in, in my experience too, um, one of the best deals that I did, I actually ended up buying and flipping the property. There were 12 heirs, 
and they were they were all half of them had already sp- spent the money, bought cars, and various things. So boy, they were they were all motivated to sell the house as quickly as possible. And I think I actually got three or four of them on a call, but uh, it was real clear, real quick, that they just wanted to get rid of the property. And you know, so you use good judgment, but get as many of the people involved as you can. That helped, Sam. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. All right, thank you for participating. All right, we have phone number ending in 2310. You're up. Hey there, this is Randy Elgin. Uh, Tim, I spoke with you earlier this morning. Uh, Already working on looking over the website stuff uh, that you sent over to me. A couple questions. Chad, where is on Facebook these – I see the files, but I don't – know where these recordings are the recordings is on the actual web the website not facebook is that correct well i still have them both places the 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 most efficient way to get them all is to go subscribe log into subscriber portal on all the leads.com and then on the left click on conference calls and then conference call archive and that puts everything in one place for anyone who's not a subscriber that, that was invited to this call, if you want to listen to any of these past calls, you can go to Facebook. The group is All the Leads Mastermind. And if you, you can do yourself, save yourself a lot of time by using the search bar in the top right where it says search this group. Just put in the word role play or mastermind, and that will bring all the, the calls to the top. And I put a, I try to tag each one with a photo of either mastermind or role play, so you can get a visual of them. Oh yeah. And if any, I can see anybody it. on the call isn't a member of that group, you should be. Please just request that you join, and we'll we'll include you. It's a really, it's a really good, really active group. We we try to be hyper responsive to get back to you, but I I, I kind of monitor that, and often one of the members will get back with just as good an answer as I was going to give, or you know, an idea that I hadn't thought of. So it's a really good way to interact with everybody really quickly. Okay. The other question, Chad, you mentioned a webinar system or systems that you use when you're having people from out of out of state. What, what systems do you use that you find work? You know, best? the simplest and cheapest one is Join.me. Um, okay. It's you know you simply say if once once everybody like you can you could do Join.me forward slash Randy E. Um, and mm-hmm. you have a, a mm-hmm. that's like your link. So any anyone that comes to that page when you've got it turned on, you can share your screen with. That's okay. the one that's probably the easiest for people to get into. And I've had I've had less of a challenge with that one than anything. There are free okay. tools. I mean, you can you can use Google Hangouts, but it's really confusing for most people. Um, okay. I've had good good luck with Join Dot Me. All right. Thank you, sir. Um, as I'm going through. Uh, these uh, my thoughts on the websites and whatnot. My question pertains to designations, specialty designations, senior real estate specialist, certified probate real estate specialist, certified real estate divorce specialist. Uh, Y'all thoughts on this? Um, I mean, I think anything that you do to, to kind of, as I would put it, raise the bar for yourself. Um, mm-hmm. Doesn't hurt your doesn't hurt your credibility, and we offer a, a CPE sort of certification, certified probate expert. So with our probate mastery right. class, so I think anything you can do to demonstrate your dedication to your service mm-hmm. definitely not going to hurt you. Um, okay. If you have extra time, you know, and you you feel like those the, the course content is valuable, then then do it. If you are doing it just for the letters, you're probably not going to. You know, people aren't going to flock to you because you have certifications, but they're good talking points, good things to put in your marketing, um, and it just gives yeah. you more credibility. I, and Randy, you probably the more the more competitive your market is, the the more important that becomes because you know we have agents sure. in rural areas that nobody else is speaking to them. It's probably a little less important if you're in you know Southern yeah. California or Florida. It's it's more mm-hmm. important. Go ahead, follow another question. With, yeah, um, with regards to the CPE, when is that next class going to be? Um, I think I'm going to do a January class because people are kind of checked out during the, the holidays. 
Um, mm-hmm. So it'll probably be in the first couple of weeks of January. I'll schedule. I was actually looking at scheduling that today. Um, you'll get an email, so it'll it'll be okay. posted. We'll announce announce it on this call, and then we'll send out emails. Chad, are you familiar with the Certified Probate Real Estate Specialist designation and what they teach and how it compares to y'all's probate mastery class? Um, I actually did go through their course last year. Um, okay. I I will say that theirs is more focused on, I guess, logistics of probate. They're, they seem to be very focused on the details of probate. Um, okay. We do touch on that. I my my course is more toward the statistics and the opportunity that exists and how to take advantage of that and sales and marketing. I think the things that I teach are more directly correlated to how we make money as real estate professionals, and okay. they go a lot deeper. They go a lot deeper into the you know the inner workings of probate. It's a good course. Um, I've I've been on their calls and um, you know, it's. I think any, anything that I I can see where some people may get lost in the details and overwhelmed by thinking they have to know as much as an attorney going through mm-hmm. that course content. And as big as a geek as I am, I try to keep ours lighter than that and try not to go too <laughs> deep. But I want I want you to understand in my course I want you to understand who the key players are, what their uh-huh. mindset and their motivation is and how we yeah. can provide value and create an opportunity out of that as, as professionals and who are the other professionals that we bring into the fold to really reinforce that and do the best job we can. And, and Chad, I feel, like such, I, go, I'm, I feel compelled to kind of jump in and say if, if for the new people on the call that might be getting overwhelmed, I, I always try to really clarify it and say essentially as a real estate agent dealing with probate, you're dealing with a motivated absentee owner. I mean, that's really all it is. The attorney handles all the legal aspects. You want to provide mm-hmm. as much service as possible, but you don't, unless you're going to directly prospect the attorneys, which isn't a bad idea. Um, right. There's, you know, the, the, the getting into the nitty gritty of exactly how the court process works is probably a little bit more than you really need to know. Right. And that's why we focus more on the sales and marketing aspect of things and the behavioral aspect of it. Good. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. All right. We got two more people in the queue. You guys are great this week, and I didn't. I haven't had to beg. I appreciate it. Uh, phone number ending in 1632. You're up. Hey, can you hear me? This is Carlin. Can hear you great, Carlin. Welcome. Thank you. I'm happy to say I got some transactions going now. <laughs> Glad yeah. to hear it. Tell us about it, please. Well, the one that I'm a little uh, puzzled on right now, um, I'm not sure that people are getting the best advice from their attorney, and I can see that I didn't have the alignment of all the siblings that I thought I did. So, yeah, I'm just sort of wondering where to go with it. So the situation is that there's three siblings, but one of them is living in the house. She's not comfortable moving until she gets her money because she's short on money. Um, their attorney initially told them they couldn't sell the house until the estate was closed in March. And when I let them know, no, that's not right, people sell all the time straight out of the estate, and they can you can do it any time. We actually got an offer, but they turned the offer down because it's not full price, and she doesn't want to move that fast. So it's just one of these frustrating situations where... I can't get the people aligned, and I'm not sure they're getting good advice. Also, they don't understand the tax impacts, and, of course, I'm not a tax advisor. So I'm just interested in your thoughts on how you work through this kind of stuff. It's not even like I can get them to consult a CPA because then they just try to Google stuff. Oh, the Googs. So (laughs) what I would do is create a solution that would – make the, the 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 person living there comfortable. Um, normally, if they weren't hung up on the disbursement, if it wasn't about money, I would just basically do a lease back with her. So I would go ahead and close the real estate transaction and do a lease back, and that might work. So if you, if you close the real estate transaction, 
include a lease back in the deal where you lease to her until let's just say April 1st. And by April 1st, the estate should be closed. She, the distribution should have happened. She'll be funded and she can move out. So that way, I mean, your, your buyer is going to have some, or the buyer is going to have some risk. Um, if, if she wouldn't willingly move out, they may have to, they, you know, they may have to evict her. Um, so the buyer is going to have to be comfortable with that risk level, but that's how I could see it coming together for you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And how do you deal yeah. with when helping them sort out their accounting and legal questions? Um, I would get them to a CPA and stay as far away from that as I could. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Charlie, the other... The other thought I had, are the other two heirs in a position that they could lend her a little bit of money to move and get paid back at the closing? Yeah, they just... Not going to happen? Yeah, she won't agree to it. It's really interesting. Hmm. She, you know, at first she was willing to move if they got a good price, you know, Mm -hmm. but now that it is a pretty good price but not full price, she wants to hold out for a full price and doesn't want to be pushed and she doesn't want to spend too much money on this end because she's going to move out of state in the end. She wants to not owe anything. Kind of reminds me, my wife did a short sale one time with five mortgages that took two years and we called to tell the guy he got mad at us because he was going to have to move. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's kind of like she that. Like, oh my God, I got you a yeah. good contract and they want to close fast and now you don't want it. Yeah, exactly. So, not too Carlin. Go, go ahead, Chad. Carlin, do you have a relationship and contact with the resident of the house? Yes. Okay. Is she the executor or is somebody else the executor? Somebody else is. Okay. So technically, she's not a co-executor in the will? Correct. Okay. So what you may be dealing with, because she might not be telling you the full truth and she doesn't intend to move at all. It's just easy to string you. It's, you, it's easy to string you along and make you think that she's eventually going to move. Um, just, just be aware of that. And ah, if, if yeah. it comes to that, I have, I have seen it happen. It's not common. If it comes to that, you're in a good position. Um, the, the executor is not the one living in the house. You can go ahead and sell the house and file the eviction if you have to do that. And I would certainly do that after the disbursement, like after the estate closed and money was available to her. I wouldn't just kick somebody out. But if if the rest of the family wants to sell and that person is, you know, essentially squatting on the in the assets, um, you can use the power of the executor to sell the house, and then use an attorney to file, a, you know, an unlawful detainer, get the eviction, and and get get that for the buyer. If that's the case, it's probably going to affect your price. So I would mm-hmm. be, a, mm-hmm. you know, I would I would keep in contact as closely as possible with with the one living in the house, and you know keep communication open and, and try to make them feel comfortable in any way you can. Because um, if mm-hmm. you do have, I mean, you, you feel like the offer you have is reasonable, and she's trying to. Oh yeah, I think it's great. I think yeah, it's it's very good. Mm-hmm. Well, you it's also a- said, you also said one other thing, and that is that if it was a full price offer, you said. You think she would she would have agreed to potentially move? Did you say that? She said she originally said that she would, yes, if it were full price. So it's also possible that you might go back to to all of them as a group and say, all right, so you're you know you whoever you are that's sitting there, you're not willing to do it if it's not full price. But at what price would you do it? You know, is there some number other than full price that you would do that at? And at least it gives you a strike point where nobody has to uh, you know it doesn't have to get ugly that she would have already pre-agreed to, and that's another option you ought to consider is, you know, what, all right, what is the dollar then that you'd be willing to work with, even though I think this is very reasonable. If you mm-hmm. don't, you know, what is the strike point that you're looking to have me achieve to get this done because I don't want to waste your time and mine. Right. Or or talk to – so there, there's three parties, right? You have three siblings? Yeah, three siblings that are inheriting the house. So, mm-hmm. so we'll, call, we'll call the resident A. And then B and mm-hmm. C are the two that want to sell but can't right now. Mm-hmm. If if you're if a full price offer would have resulted in a net uh, a check to A of X amount, let's let's call that fifty thousand bucks, and you get an offer on the table that's only going to net them forty thousand bucks, 
all you have to bridge is a ten thousand dollar gap. So if you go to B and C and say, Hey guys, will you throw in five grand at the closing? We'll go ahead and get this done. So the other siblings could bring them up to the same level of a full price distribution, but you can get mm, the sale done. Yeah, good idea. Charlie, I think so you we got a lot of solu- yeah, I got a lot of solutions to that. We have one more person in the queue and I want to get to them, but you said you had deals going now. I'm hoping the others are a little bit uh, less complicated. <laughs> yeah, the other one, it's it's great. Okay. It's um the Good. the people listed with me, they called from one of the letters. They love me and we got a contract and we had the home inspection yesterday and it's closing in January. Just that, smooth, yeah. smooth. And that's uh, actually for everybody that's, on the call that's, that's never done a probate deal. That's how ninety nine percent of them go. Yeah, <laughs> just going to say that that's, that's that's normal. The deal we just spent ten minutes discussing is probably one out of fifty or one out of a hundred. But it but it's good to thank you for asking those questions. And if it comes up for anybody in the call, they'll have some ideas on how to handle it. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you. All right, excellent. One more person in the queue. Phone number ending in seven two four four. You're up. Hey, yeah, this is Mike Abney in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. How are you guys hey, doing Mike. today? Wonderful. Hey, Thanks for uh, chiming in. Okay, so uh, I received a letter. I've been working with the, the uh, Mailbox Motivator, and I received a letter from an attorney, and it says, in review of your recent letter of the advertisement postmarked November Blah 2016, please send me a copy of your certification as a probate expert. A copy of the letter is enclosed for your <laughs> review. And basically, I'd sent out the options letter as the first letter to a large group of people in the Pittsburgh area, and uh, a, I can't tell if this is a uh, I, I'm, maybe I'm going to be a little paranoid here, but I can't tell if I'm setting myself up for a lot of drama from some attorney uh, at a firm that works with a competitor of mine in real estate, or B, this might be a great opportunity. I can't tell. Is this ha- does this happen very often? I haven't heard of it. Um, Never heard of it before in four years. No. If uh, if it was an opportunity, I would say it would have came in the form of a phone call. That was uh, with an attorney on the other end that was excited to meet you. Um, yes. Doesn't doesn't sound like the case to me. Okay, so are you su- so, Chad? Are you suggesting I should ignore this, or should I actually send in my copy of my certified probate mastery certificate to her as requested, or what do you? What's the next? What's the next step on this? And because I don't know what it is, and that's why I'm asking. So. So I had an elementary school teacher that had a file 13. And it was this round metal can that sat right beside of her desk. I understand. I yes. Filing it in file thirteen. <laughs> okay, so it's been it's been sitting on my desk. I meant to call in on last Thursday's call, but I was out on an appointment. So that was kind of where I was leaning on this because I don't see any upside to this call to, to this yeah. to this letter going out to her. I, so it's not just me then. Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah. No. Yeah. You you. It really doesn't sound like you've done anything wrong, and he, maybe he's trying to trap you into doing something. So. I, yeah, I, I think we all agree. There just doesn't seem to be much upside to responding. And this is okay, not – this, is this the attorney that is handling that particular – for the seller? That, that it is. It's, it, it's, it's okay. the attorney who's handling the estate. Now, they do have a – it is a significant piece of property in the Pittsburgh area that they that the decedent owns that has to go mm-hmm. through the probate. So there's a – there is some potential upside, and they do a lot of probate cases. So there is some you know, potential upside. My best guess, Mike, he may have a realtor that he routine, routine, routinely oh, recommends. Oh, they, they and do, the, and it's a, yeah. And, and the, honestly, and the seller bypassed him and hired you, and he's not happy about it. Hmm. Well, they <laughs> do have a. So there's a little bit of backstory on that. So the, this this firm works with somebody in my own office who uh, is probably the least pleasant real estate agent you've ever met in your entire life, and I don't know how she does it, but she's a huge success. But God. She ought to print her business cards on on sandpaper because, good lord, she's coarse. <laughs> great comment, great comment. Yeah, that it sounds like sour grapes to me. And if that's the case, you're not going to turn this. You're not going to change this attorney's mind. So it it just sounds like an intimidation technique. I would ignore it. And okay. fortunately, fortunately, that's one of the questions I get asked a lot. Should I call the attorney? I should call the executor. The executor is lower hanging fruit. There's no law anywhere that I'm aware of. Uh, I better do the disclaimer, check with your broker, but I, I don't know of a place in the country where you have to get the attorney's permission to list the property. So it sounds like this guy might just be a little – have his nose out of joint because you listed it – they listed it with somebody that he wasn't recommending and you know, trying to intimidate you. That's kind of what it sounds like. 
So I okay, agree with that's Chad. cool. I agree with okay. Chad. Toss it and move on. Okay, that was that was my gut reaction, but I, you know, there's a chance that there might be some upside to this, but boy, there's a hell of a lot of downside. It looked like to me. So. <laughs> Agree. Just sell the property and prove the guy wrong, and then call him back and ask him for a referral <laughs> after okay. after you deliver some results. Absolutely. Good question. Though. Okay. Thank you. Thank All you. right, guys. Last person in the queue, and we're right at the time limit. Chad, anything, uh, partners? Anything you want to say in summary? Nothing from me. Make it a great week, like you usually say, and uh, let's keep rocking. It's a great time of the year. We're we're doing well, and we're hearing lots of good things are happening for people this month in particular. And it's an I, I guess I would say this. It seems to be an unusual December. I think a lot of it has to do with a lot of people are kind of sitting back waiting to see what happened after the elections and all that. But things are moving. I've, I've talked to a bunch of people in the last several days, and everybody's got lots of business going on in December, and that's a an interesting time for that. So keep on rocking. Excellent. I wanted to share one thing. We have just been so pleased and gratified that one of our biggest sources of growth lately has been our existing agents adding second, third, and we had a gentleman this morning out of fourth county. So I just want to let you know, if any of you have a goal to grow your probate business by adding another county next year, reach out to me personally. We're going to always give our existing subscribers first shot and if the county is contiguous to one that you're already in, we'll give you a good deal on the price also. So please, if you have any interest in growing, you know, I guess horizontally, <laughs> you would call it by adding more territory, reach out to me. You guys know how to find me. And I always like to end these calls by, by just saying, you know, you took a half hour to be here. We had a tremendous turnout. I appreciate the five people that participated. I always like to end these calls by saying, you know, take one idea, one thought, one thing that kind of inspired you on the call today, go out and put it into practice and bring it back next Thursday and share it with the group. Thank you very, very much, guys. Make it a great week, and we will talk to you next Thursday. Have a good one. Take care.